new at four today, a story fit for the big screen. An F-16 fighter pilot spending his last moments alive saving special forces in Iraq. His wife back home with their five small kids receiving two knocks at the door. The first explaining her husband had crashed. The second reveals that he was missing. In our special reports, Ultimate Sacrifice, News 2's Alex Dennis now has the story of a woman living in Franklin who shares the moment her world turned upside down. It was a fierce, fast romance between 17-year-old Troy Gilbert and 19-year-old Ginger. We fell in love and got married the weekend after we graduated. Even still, Troy's first love remained a major part of their life. He had wanted to fly from the time he was a little boy. There's a really great picture of him when he was on the Little League team. They're all looking at the cameraman, except Troy's looking up at the sky, and he was looking at planes that were flying by. It was his dream. Ginger became Troy's wingman in life as the pilot, regarded for his expert ability flying F-16s, was thrust into the likes of a Hollywood movie. He was Top Gun. <laughs> he was. The couple moved 11 times in 13 years and grew and grew and grew. We were always a priority to him. Their children were just eight, six, two, and the twins were three months old when Troy was tapped for a major mission. He said, you know, I, I, I could say no, but I think it's what I'm supposed to do. And I said, you know, what if something happens to you? He said, if anything does, you'll know without a doubt that it was God's will. And I think I never thought about that conversation ever again until I got the knock at the front door. On November 27, 2006, Air Force Major Troy Gilbert appeared over the horizon in Iraq, full force, guns engaged, poised to protect. There were about 15 enemy trucks that were coming after about 22 special operations guys um, that had had this crash landing on this desert floor with no cover. Using his jet's Gatlin gun, Troy tore through the sky, destroying the first enemy truck. He was flying about 250 feet above the ground at probably 500 miles an hour perpendicular. He screamed in low and fast for a second pass. His tail clipped the ground. He was ascending. Um, he, he was just feet within feet of making it. When troops made it to the crash scene, Troy was gone. They came back to my house, second knock at the door that evening and said, uh, really the unthinkable, which was that Troy, um, his body had been taken by Iraqi insurgents so that they'd rolled him up in a carpet and taken him in the back of a truck. Five days later, the Air Force confirmed skull fragments found in the cockpit matched Troy's DNA. The same day, a video message mailed by Troy arrived. I can't be with you this Christmas, uh, and it breaks my heart. I miss you guys. I love you very much. It was hard. <laughs> It was really hard, but um, it was such a beautiful thing. The young widow buried her love, but their story is far from over. We had a full casket burial at Arlington National Cemetery where he was laid to rest, but it, you know, only a handful of us really knew that he wasn't in there. Alex Dennis reporting for us there. Also, folks, this story, it's far from over. Why this family buried Major Gilbert's body three different times. That's coming up tonight on News 2 at 5 as we continue our Ultimate Sacrifice Special Reports.